Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you how to create a post-apocalyptic wasteland base. Hey everyone, Matthew from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to today's painting video. And like I said in the intro today, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way of creating a post-apocalyptic or wasteland themed base. And for that, I'm going to be using Firebug here from Gatefall. So for this theme, the basic look that we're going for is that the landscape is really barren and that the earth has been left scorched after some form of a nuclear fallout and that there's very little vegetation left over, and what vegetation there is, is pretty much dead anyway. So our starting point for this base is to build up some land mass, and this is so that we can build it up around the feet of our mini, so that the character looks as though they're standing in the environment, rather than being artificially just plonked on top. And whenever I'm building up landmass, I always use gap filler. This is just a really, really good cheap alternative to something like Sterling Mud or other landmass products from other miniature painting companies. But of course, you use whatever is available to you. So I'm just building this up around the feet of Firebug and then I'm using my tweezers there just to create a bit of texture because what we'll be doing is base coating this and then putting a wash over the top to bring out some of the texture. So we want to create some low points for that wash to flow into. And now just using my hobby knife, I'm just cutting out some small chunks from a cork block to use as rocks. This is just a cork block that you would use to wrap sanding sheets around. But when you take chunks out of it, it makes perfectly textured rocks. And so just taking these, I'm just going to press these into that gap filler so that as the gap filler dries, it will lock these in place. Now, how many rocks you place and how big you want them to be is totally up to you. You can see there that I just wanted a couple of smaller ones. So I cut one in half there just so that there's a little bit of variety from one rock to another. And now to base coat, I'm going to be mixing together earth brown and explosion orange. You of course just use whatever browns and oranges are available in your collection. But for this mix, there would roughly be 30% brown, 70% orange. And the reason that I've got it well and truly onto the orange side rather than brown is because after this dries, we're going to be putting a dark brown wash over the top and I wanna make sure that it does still keep some of its orange tone. Because in the end, we are going to be trying to give it that scorched earth look and having that orange tinge to it is really going to help pull that off rather than looking more brown. And now to bring out all of that texture that we created earlier on in the base, we're just going to be putting a dark brown wash over the top. And for that, I'm just using Agrax Earthshade. So now that that dark brown wash has dried and we've brought all of that texture back out, we're going to go back to that same base coat color mix that we had earlier on, and we're just gonna dry brush over the top. So this is going to bring out that texture even more because we're going to catch all of those raised edges, but it's also going to shift the colors back to that real orangey sort of tone, which is going to really help make it look as though the earth has been scorched after some sort of a nuclear fallout.
And now it's time to start painting the rocks and to base coat the rocks. I'm using earth brown, which is the same brown that I used in that mix for the base coat color. And the reason why I'm base coating with brown as opposed to gray is because the next step after we've base coated the rocks is to start adding some gray into this brown to then do some dry brushing over the top. And if we start with a brown undercoat, it will allow that brown tone to keep showing through, which will help to make the rocks look as though they've been affected by the nuclear fallout as well, and that they look just that little bit different to how rocks normally look that we're familiar with. And then the next stage is pretty simple. So I've taken that earth brown base coat color, mixed in a little bit of stone gray, so it's still mostly earth brown. And now I'm just dry brushing over the top. For this first layer, I'm pretty much dry brushing over the entire surface of the rock, picking out all of the texture. And then once that dries, I'll then do a second layer by mixing in more of the stone gray, but I'll reduce the amount of surface area that I cover. And then I'll do another layer with a bit more stone gray mixed in, further reduce the amount of surface area, until I'm then starting to mix in some misty gray, which is my lightest gray. And that'll give lots of tonal variation because there'll be lots of different mixes of the browns and greys showing through, which will really help to create some good natural variation. And now to finish it off, we're just going to add a couple of tufts of grass just to make it seem as though there is still some vegetation that is still able to grow, but very, very little, that this landscape is very, very barren. But you'll see that the grass tufts that I've chosen, though, are not a vibrant green. There's quite a bit of brown in there. So the vegetation that is still there is only just surviving and that there's very, very little of it. So I'm just going to be gluing these in between the rocks just because that's really the only safe place that they can grow because they can't get trampled. But the idea with these tufts though is that it's reinforcing that barren wasteland look and that the earth has been so tainted that basically no vegetation can survive anymore. And so now all we need to do is paint the rim black just to neaten everything up and then our post-apocalyptic wasteland theme base is finished. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. As always, I really hope you enjoyed it and found something in here that you can take away and use in your own painting. If you did, please consider giving the video a thumbs up as well as hitting that subscribe button if you haven't yet. But that's going to do us for today. So until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.